Hi guys, I'm Ishan from FTC Team 9794wizards.exe. In today's video, we're going to be making the Go Build a Strafer Kit. And this Strafer Kit is a Mechanum drivetrain uh, that uses the Go Build a Mechanum wheels and Go Build a Yellow Jacket motors to make a very simple and easy to use Mechanum drivetrain. Um, so this is the first part of our video series on odometry and using odometry in FTC. What odometry is, is it's a very accurate way of measuring your robot's position on the field. And we'll get into a little bit more of the details of how it works and what equipment you're going to need to make it in later videos. Um, in this video, we're going to be showing you how to build the Go Build a Strafer Kit and make the modifications by adding these two channels to the side. That way you can make your drivetrain equipped with odometry pods for very accurate motions during autonomous and teleop. So what is odometry? Odometry is a way that we are able to keep track of our robot position independent of the motors. In most cases, FTC teams use the built-in motor encoders to keep track of where their drivetrain is. But what if their robot is against a wall and their motors are running, their wheels are running like this, but the robot isn't actually moving? In that case, the robot wouldn't know exactly where it is on the field and that prevents it from being accurate in its motions during autonomous or teleop. With odometry, what we do is we take one of the motor encoders and we actually put it on a separate system that's independent of the drive motors. So we have three extra wheels on the robot and those wheels are constantly tracking the exact position of the robot relative to the robot, not to the wheels that are being used to drive the robot. And so using these odometry pods, um, we are able to get an accurate X, Y, and theta coordinate position on the um, playing field. And throughout this video series, we're going to be showing you how to do that. For this first step, we will be needing the nine hole U channel, the dual block mount, and the 11 millimeter screws. The purpose of this first step is to prepare the nine hole U channels to be mounted onto the 17 hole U channels and to create the frame for the drivetrain. So I will now be attaching the dual block mount to the nine hole U channels. Um, we will be mounting one dual block mount to the two ends of each side of the U channel. So we will be using this, this hole and this hole at each end. Um, and something to watch out for is that the holes on the dual block mounts are offset, toward, offset towards one side. So we want the holes to be away from the sides of the U channel. So we're going to position them like this, like this. Okay. So when you're done, your U channels should look like this with two dual block mounts on each side. And remember to check each of the dual block mounts so that the holes are offset away from the sides of the channel. Okay, so for this step, you need the two channels you made in the previous step and um, two 17 hole U channels along with um, eight millimeter um, screws. Uh, the purpose of this step is to finish building the frame for the drivetrain. To start off, we're going to connect the um, nine hole channels to the 17 hole channels, and we're going to connect them two holes from the back of the 17 hole channels and uh, nine holes from the back of the 17 hole channels. And we're going to use the um, four exterior holes from um, on the dual mount brackets. So this is what the final product is supposed to look like, and you can see from the inside that there are eight millimeter screws in these four places surrounding the ninth hole and the second hole from the back on the 17 hole channel.
In this step, what we're going to be doing is we're going to take these seven hole U channels and we're going to be attaching them to the frame that we've just built. Um, this is a modification from the original steps in the Go Build a Straper Kit guide. And these modifications are so then we can put odometry pods um, or encoder pods inside of the chassis. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking these and attaching them to the side. And not only will this provide a housing for um, us to put the odometry pods, it'll also prevent uh, game elements such as like small blocks or balls from getting in between the wheels, uh, which can help prevent your chassis from tipping over. Um, so for this step, we'll need the two seven hole U channels. We'll also need uh, M4 nylock nuts. Um, these aren't included in the kit. None of this stuff is included in the kit, so you'll have to buy it separately. There will be a parts list linked in the description of everything that you need besides the straper kit. Um, you also need uh, M4 10 millimeter screws, um, and these are going to be used to attach this channel to the 17 hole channel. So this is what the layout's going to be. We're going to be taking the seven hole U channels and taking the center hole and lining it up with the center hole on the 17 hole U channels. Um, then we're going to take our M4 10 millimeter screws and these 10 millimeter screws are going to go um, from the side of the seven, um, the seven hole U channel and they're going to go into the four corners, the four outside corners of the um, channel in order to make sure that we have the maximum stability uh, for this channel and it doesn't move around at all. And then we're going to take a nylock nut, uh, M4 nylon nut, and we're going to just put it on there and you'll need a wrench in order to tighten that. And so make sure to do this for both sides. So tighten the nylock nut, make sure it's all the way tight and uh, you'll be good to go. So now that we've attached these, um, make sure when you're attaching them that you get them on the four outer corners and you tighten the nylon lock nuts all the way. You will need a wrench to hold them down. Um, and make sure that you've got this bar centered and that'll help you get ready for putting odometry on this chassis. For this step, you will need four, four motors, 16 11 millimeter screws, four quad block brackets, and 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 four uh, uh, pinion bevel gears. You will put you will use the 11 millimeter screws to attach the quad the quad block block brackets onto the onto the motor, and then add the pinion bevel gears. So for this step, what we're going to do is put the quad mount bracket on top of the motor and we're going to line up the unthreaded holes on the quad mount bracket with threaded holes on the motor. We're then going to use screws uh, to attach the quad mount bracket onto the motor. For this part of the step, we're going to attach the pinion bevel gears to the motors. So there's two parts of the pinion bevel gears, the small part and the gear. They should line up perfectly just like that. We're going to use the two screws included with the pinion bevel gears to attach the two pieces together. Make sure you put the screws into the unthreaded side and just tighten it with your hand. It's important to leave this loose as we're going to be adjusting it later on in the video. So now if you look at the pinion bevel gear there's a flat part or a flat side to the hole in the center and that flat side should line up with the flat side on the motor. Just slide the pinion bevel gear onto the motors. Leave the pinion bevel gear loose as we will be adjusting where it is on the motor shaft later. This is what one of the final things should look like. Notice that, that these screws are a little loose because you will be adjusting them later. For the next step, um, we need the frame that we made in the previous in two steps ago. We need the motors that we assembled in the previous step and 11 millimeter screws. The purpose of this step is in order to mount these motors inside the frame. So the tap tools should be facing horizontally, and um, they should fall on um, the holes that come after the three big holes. So that would be like right here and if you need more information on how to assemble it then you can look at the guide on GoBuilda. 
So this is what the final product should look like and you should make sure as you can see over here that it should be the third big hole and the um, three four holes that line up after it. Um, if you still need more help you can check the guide on gobuilder.com. In this step we're going to be mounting the shafts and the bevel gears to the GoBuilder channel. And what we're going to need for this step is we're going to need four of the bevel gears, we're going to need eight bearings, four six millimeter D shafts, eight sh pieces of shim, eight clamping hubs, and the four of the bevel gear hubs. So now we're going to get the shaft ready and the first thing we need is the six millimeter D shaft. We're going to need uh, to first put a, one of these clamping shaft collars on the end. And this uses a different screw than M4. So you're going to need to use a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench instead of the normal Allen wrench that you use for most Go Build a screws. I'm going to screw this in and then clamp this onto the end of the shaft. Next, I'm going to take one of our shim pieces and put it directly next to the clamping collar. After that, I'm going to take a ball bearing and put it onto the shaft. Next, I need to assemble the bevel gear assembly. So each of the bevel gear hubs comes with a little bag of screws. Four of them are different lengths than the other two. The two long screws you're going to need to put on the pinch side of on the hub directly, while the other two, four screws are used to attach the bevel gear to the hub. So first you screw these in. Now I'm going to put the bevel gear onto the hub. You can see that, make sure that you're putting the screws onto the countersunk side of the bevel gear, as otherwise you're putting it on the wrong way. So I'm going to loosen these screws and let it align up, then tighten the bevel gear and put it back through the channel. Okay, now I'm going to try and put this back on another t a second try. So you can see I successfully got that in. Now we need to secure the shaft on the other side. We put the bearing in on the other side and then put up a, a shim and the shaft collar. I'm going to tighten the shaft collar now. One thing that I'm not going to do in this step is tighten the bevel gear hub into the shaft. You can see now that this spins very smoothly. Now that you've, um, I've gotten all four of them, this is what it should look like. Remember to keep these bevel gear hubs a little bit loose right now, and then we'll tighten them in the next step. This is the final step of building the Schaefer kit with the modifications that we had. Um, for this step, you're going to need the four Go Build a yellow mechanum wheels, um, number four washers, um, 22 millimeter M4 screws, and the Go Build a hyper hubs. Uh, and in this step, what we're effectively going to be doing is lining up these gears so then we get a good mesh on our bevel gears. And then we're going to be mounting the um, Go Build a mechanum wheels onto the chassis so then our chassis is ready to go. So let's take a look at this one part. Uh, the first step that we were going to do is uh, shift around the bevel gears to make sure that they mesh properly. So I'm going to loosen up the bevel gears on the motors and I'm going to make sure that the bevel gear on the shaft is loose as well. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that the mesh is perfect. So I create a 90 degree angle between the two gears and they are both flush. So you can see right here, I've got them both flush. And now I'm going to tighten down on both pinch bolts on both gears. And uh, one of the great things that GoBuild has done with this is put two pinch bolts on each gear. That way, even if one comes loose, you'll have the other one for redundancy and uh, you should be good to go during like a match or something like that. So I got those two tightened and now I'm going to get the two motor ones tightened um, and making sure that they're flush. All right, so now that my bevel gears are nicely lined up, you can see that they run smoothly. Um, we're going to start assembling the mechanum wheel. 
So for each corner of your robot, uh, the right front and the left back mechanum wheels are going to be different than the um, left front and right back mechanum wheels. And so you can see how the ang rollers are angled like this. Um, and so right here is the right front side of our uh, robot, but right now it's currently flipped over. So the one with the rollers that go like this are going to be right front and left back, and the one with rollers that go like this are going to be left front and right back. Uh, when you flip over the when you flip over the chassis with them installed, uh, they should make like a sort of X pattern on the top of them. So we're going to take four of the 22 millimeter long screws. And we're going to take four of the number four washers and um, we're going to attach the hyper hub to the mechanum wheel. And the hyper hub is great because um, it's a balanced hub, so it's going to prevent other forces, uh, create other forces. And you can see how um, there's a black piece inside of here, and that's offset to one side, so it's closer to one plate than it is to another. Uh, we're going to attach the hyperhub onto the side that it's not closer to. So it's going to go into this side, which has a lot deeper hole. And so the hyperhub is just going to drop in there. And then we're going to take our 22 millimeter screws. Uh, one second, I'm just going to put this down. We're going to take our 22 millimeter screws. We're going to put a number four washer on them. And then we're going to screw these into the hyperhub. So you're going to screw into the hyper hub um, and make sure you put the washer in there. That way you don't destroy the plastic center of the uh, mechanum wheel and just do all four screws. So now the mechanum wheel is ready to be mounted onto the chassis. Uh, you'll notice that the hyperhub again has a D, like most of the other products here, a uh, flat portion to it. So you want to make sure that you line that up with the flat portion on the axle. So I'm going to do that. And then when putting it on, you want to leave a little bit of space between um, the channel and the screw. Uh, in the guide, they recommend 1.25 millimeters. But as long as you have just a little bit of space for clearance, uh, that's all you're going to need. So I'm just going to put it around here. And then what you can do, one of the nice things about this mechanum wheel is you can actually just reach straight into it to tighten the pinch points on the hyper hub. So I'm just going to reach in, tighten that. And then on the other side, there's two of them again, so it's going to be a redundant process. So make sure that you get both of them tightened all the way. Alright, so now once that's done, your hyper hub should not fall off and you should be nice and ready to go with that one. Repeat that process on all four wheels and your strafer kit will be ready to go. Alright, so this is what it should look like with all four wheels on there and all four bevel gears. Um, as you can see, because we're upside down, this entire thing just spins around. Um, and that's because of the orientation that we've put the mechanum wheels in. If we flip it over onto its right side, you can see the X pattern I was talking about earlier how these make an X, and that allows it so then it doesn't spin around and it can't move uh, without um, it being, uh, without the motors actually moving. And so you can see it can move forwards, backwards, left and right, um, and it's overall a great chassis to use. We'd like to thank our sponsor GoBuilda for sponsoring this video. If you have any questions or want to see more of their products, go to GoBuilda.com to get more information. Thank you guys for watching this video. We hope you learned how to build this drivetrain and you got the additions that you needed in order to get odometry on it. Um, in the next part of this video series, we're going to cover putting electronics on here and building the odometers and putting them into the drivetrain. That way you could get your drivetrain uh, up and running.